This video is being powered by the good people at BetUS. You like free money? You want to bet on some football? Well, BetUS has a great deal for you. Enter the promo code YouTube150 to earn a 150% match deposit bonus on your first three deposits, all the way up to $2,000 of bonus cash. Great customer service. It's 24-7, 365 days a year. Fastest payouts in the business within 24 hours. And 10% gambler's insurance against all your net losses, as long as you stay active every six months. Terms and conditions apply. And when you gamble, please do so responsibly. Never bet more than you can afford to lose. What up, everybody? It is your boy, Ben Dung, here in another New York Giants video. How you all doing? It's hump day. We're over to hump. Chris and I will be live later tonight for Talking Giants. We can talk about how great this season has gone for the Giants so far. And obviously, it's been great. Rowan, too, as we usually are, lost a tough game to Washington because we did not have a kicker on the team. Um, Good point to Malik Neighbors drop that obviously uh, contributed, but, but I'm not blaming Malik Neighbors. The man had about 70% of the receiving yards uh, for the Giants, and he was a beast. And I'm very happy with Malik Neighbors. The defense was obviously very porous in Washington, ran for over, or I'm sorry, had over 420 yards of offense against us, and it's not good. Um, so, you know, it always begs the question, people are like, well, Daniel Jones didn't do that bad. And some people are killing Daniel Jones. And I'm not blaming Daniel Jones for the loss. I don't think Daniel Jones had anything to do with the loss, honestly. I think he did fine. Giants did not have many possessions. But, uh, you know, playing devil's advocate, he was 16 out of 27 for 178. It's not really getting it done against a very bad secondary. And we all know that Daniel Jones is – most likely on his way out, right? The Giants signed with this four-year deal with the option they got after two years. We know that Shane uh, was looking into getting a quarterback, wanted to trade up and get a quarterback this year. So obviously, Daniel Jones, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure he sees the writing on the wall and he probably won't be back here next year. And he definitely won't be back here next year if the Giants don't turn this around. And there's all these rumors coming out now and you just keep hearing rumors and that's really all they are. I've heard rumors about we heard rumors about Dak Prescott being a giant next year. And obviously that did not work out. I've heard Zach Wilson. And I've heard him mentioned in trade rumors. And the Bryce Young one is is very interesting. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. Bryce Young, um, to me, would you, I mean, would you take a chance on him? I'm not talking about giving up a first or a second round pick, maybe not even a third. You know, I'm pretty sure he got a fourth round compensatory pick for Saquon Barkley. Say you had to give up a fourth your compensatory fourth round pick and a seventh round pick. If you're, would you do that? If you were a Giants fan, would you be happy with that? And people would say, no, Bryce Young can't make it in Carolina. He sucks. Listen, man, Bryce Young is a Heisman Trophy winner. He's the first overall pick in the draft. He's just starting a second season on a horrendous team. If there's a team worse than us, it's Carolina. Now, people are like, well, you don't have the cap space. And this time. He's on a rookie contract. He's not getting paid a fortune. And the way you do it is this. This would be my the way I would go about this. I'd be fine with them taking a shot at their young guy that won a Heisman Trophy. Listen, he was much more coveted coming out of college than Daniel Jones was, right? We all know Bryce Young has an inordinate amount of talent. Maybe Brian Dable can get something out of him. Jones is already kind of set in his ways by the time Dable gets here. You know, the, the saying is can't teach an old dog new tricks. Leopard doesn't change his spots. Daniel Jones, his instincts are bad. He can't coach instincts. You can coach talent. Now, I'll be honest, I don't get to watch Bryce Young play a lot in Carolina. I live in New York. I don't see Carolina Panther games. And who the hell would want to watch them anyway? I watch my own shitty team. What the hell would I want to watch another one for? But he's young. And maybe Brian Dable could fix him. But this is the other thing. If you did trade that for Bryce Young, you have to cut somebody, probably be Drew Locke. You're going to ride out the season. Darren Jones is going to go to the bench. You would play Bryce Young to see what you have. And if Bryce Young plays really well or you see a big improvement and the Giants start winning some football games and he becomes a really good quarterback, then you don't have to worry about that in the draft. You don't have to worry about that going forward. You say, oh, there's our kid. And you got him for three more years, right? Because you can pick up the fifth-year option. He's only in the second year. So if he ends up being good, you have him under rookie contract for three more years. It's a no-brainer. And if he sucks, if he comes in and he's terrible and he's awful, and he's no good, and we lose, guess what? Well, at that point, you're going to release Daniel Jones in 2025. You're going to draft the quarterback that you want. Bryce Jones, your backup. Yeah, I mean, that'd be a pricey backup. But, I mean, that's what they go for. Tyrod Taylor is getting paid more, how much by the Jets? $8 million a year? 
9 million a year. I forget. 10 million. A year. He might be getting 10 million a year. No, that's a backup quarterbacks go for nowadays. So Bryce Young actually would be market value for a backup if he's no good. In my opinion, you don't have a lot to lose. And the ironic thing is the people that are so dead set against this with Joe Shane, you know, oh, no, can't give up picks. We can't afford to give up picks. But these same people are saying Joe Shane sucks at drafting. Joe Shane can't pick. He's a, he's a terrible drafter. So why would you want more picks for a guy that you don't think can draft well? You see what I'm saying? To me, depending on the price tag, I would certainly take a shot at him. Because this year, I mean, like I said, maybe Daniel Jones turns things around. I don't see it happening. Football is a weird game. You never know. You never know what the Giants are going to do against Cleveland. But if you're 0-4 after Dallas, what do you have to lose? The season's a throwaway at that point. If you don't win a game in September, you're 0-4, going nowhere. You're throwing it away anyway at that point. You might as well try something different. Maybe you don't. Like I said, if you bring in Bryce Young and he plays really well and you end up drafting in the top 10, maybe you get a guy like Travis Hunter. Maybe you sure up your secondary. Maybe you get another offensive lineman, but the quarterback would not be a question. There's really nothing to lose. Jones is going to the end of the year regardless if the Giants are bad. Drew Locke's here on a one-year deal. He's gone. Tommy DeVito is what he is, right? They don't need to hang on to him either. They don't need to carry three quarterbacks. They pretty much do this because Daniel Jones' has injury history. But in my opinion, it's not a terrible move. Now, I'm not going to sit here and get mad if they don't do it. I'm not going to sit here and get mad if they do do it. These are all freaking rumors. I doubt any of this will actually come true. It's hard for me to believe that Carolina's already given up on Bryce Young again after one season in the NFL. I mean, that's kind of crazy. You traded up with the Bears. You gave up a ton of draft capital to get that guy. If you to throw it away already again on a, on a team that's just absolutely god-awful, um, you might as well let Bryce Young play, but – if you don't think you can do it there and you can get some kind of draft compensation, I guess maybe you do it that way. Um, and you take your quarterback in this year's draft because that's very possible. They're going to have a top five pick if they continue to go this way. And we all know that there's guys like Cameron Ward, who I love. There's Shadour Sanders. There's Quinn Ewers. There's Milrow. I don't think Milrow is a top five pick, but your upper echelon quarterbacks are going to be there. If they don't believe Bryce Young is a guy, they could definitely trade him, get another, you know, more draft capital and take their own quarterback in the top five. But these, these are always interesting to talk about. I, I put that on Twitter. It got a lot of uh, got a lot of responses, man, which is which is what prompted me to do the video. I wasn't even going to do a video today. When I put that out there on Twitter and said, hey, would you guys want to do this? The, there was a lot of responses, which I always love. I love to hear your thoughts. You know, I love to do it. That's why I do these videos. And I want to hear from you. Whether you agree with me, don't agree with me, that's fine. It's cool. We don't need to agree on everything. But I love to get the pulse of the fan base about you know, situations like this or, you know, whatever, these trade rumors, get your thoughts about if you'd like it or not and why you would or why you wouldn't, you know, just be, don't be like, nope, he sucks. Well, I guess that'd be a good reason not to, nope, he sucks. But don't just be like, no, and not give me a reason. Or, but like, yes, not give me a reason. I like to hear from you. Let me know why you would take Bryce Young. Let me know why you would want nothing to do with Bryce Young. Leave it in the comment section. Hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe, ring the bell. I'll see you later. It's a bad diggity dizzle, and I'm out. Peace.